welcome to the class in the series on constitutional law today we are going to discuss about the basic features of indian constitution okay let's see yes the basic and the foremost important feature of indian constitution is its length yes it is considered as the lengthiest or the longest constitution of the world it has in its original shape 395 articles 395 articles and all over the years like last 75 years we have been amending the constitution so many times and all the amended articles if we are adding the number will will be much higher okay anyway in its original shape itself it had 395 articles as as far as the latest report says the english version of the constitution indian constitution has 146385 words in it okay now when we compare american constitution has only 7 articles and australian constitution more than 120 whereas indian constitution 395 okay it makes it the biggest and the lengthiest constitution of the world now indian constitution envisages a federal system a federal system a federal system with unitary bias that means india is basically a federation of various states that means there is a central government and there is also a state government both of them are having powers to legislate they both of them are having executive powers also that way india is a federation but at the same time it has a unitary bias in the sense that it guarantees or it gives only single citizenship there is no citizenship in india on the basis of the state in which you are born or the on the or on the basis of, on which the state in which you are living you do not have any citizenship based on being a maharashtrian being a malayali being a kannada being a gujarati no the citizenship is only indian okay similarly there are there is a union list where the union can legislate a legislative list where the legislatures can le legislate but at the same time there is a concurrent list from which both of them can legislate and in all these things the parliament's power to legislate takes the upper hand moreover indian constitution is giving emergency powers to the central government whereby declaring an emergency the powers of the state can be taken over by the central government and the governments who the governors who are the executive head of the state is appointed by the president okay so so many things it shows that it has a unitary bias and the constitution pre itself says that india is a union of states not a federation of states okay now parliamentary government indian constitution envisages a parliamentary form of government we know that union parliament has rajya sabha and lok sabha similarly yes there are leg state legislative assemblies state legislative councils also but here the prime minister who is the head of the ruling party or the members of parliament of the majority party in the lok sabha is not directly elected by the people people elect the representative of the, or the member of parliament and from the elected members of the parliament the prime minister is elected no, normal case prime minister is the leader of the majority party okay but prime minister is not directly elected by the by the people in india so we are that way following an indirect form of election to the prime minister parliamentary government is the system okay we are not following the presidential form of election now judicial review is considered to be one of the pillars of indian constitution it says that any law passed in india by the parliament is subject to judicial review 
whatever, whatever and whichever laws passed by the parliament, the validity of such a law can be questioned in the courts in India and the courts are empowered to declare these laws as unconstitutional if they find it so. That means the judiciary has an upper hand over the legislations passed by the parliament in India. Okay, and that makes our Indian judiciary a strong and an independent body. Now, fundamental rights under part 3 of Indian constitution mainly guarantees right to equality, right to freedom, right to life, liberty, religion and constitutional remedies. This is one of the main feature of Indian constitution and along with that, there is another feature that is fundamental duties under Article 51A which is a distinguishing feature which is rare to find in, co in democratic constitutions. If we compare with American constitution or Australian constitution, you will see fundamental rights but you will not see fundamental duties. These fundamental duties are as the citizen are given rights, it also demands that these are your duties you have to fulfill. Okay, then single citizenship. As I told you already, in India there is no dual citizenship. You will not get citizenship on the basis of the state in which you are living or the state to which you belong to. But your citizenship, irrespective of the state, it is Indian citizenship and only one citizenship. Now, Indian constitution in writing states that it is a secular constitution. We do not follow any particular religion as its official religion. But at the same time, everyone, all Indian citizens are having right to religion. That means they have the right to decide which religion to follow, propagate and practice. Universal adult franchise is a distinguishing feature of Indian constitution whereby every Indian citizen who has completed 18 years of age can vote irrespective of the class, caste, religion, clan, ethnicity, national, uh, ethnicity or gender. Okay, and we do not have any constituencies on the basis of religion or any other community. These all are general constituencies and the right to vote is only deter and the right to vote is given to everyone who has completed 18 year of age irrespective of any other distinction. Okay, so these are considered to be the basic features of Indian constitution. If you have any doubts, please make use of my comment box. I'll be happy to help.